for introdu introducing me so to the organ uh, to the audience, and uh, I would like to thank the organizer to give, for giving me this uh, so very nice opportunity. And uh, this is my third time to visit here, and uh, well, so <laughs> this is my first time to give to present so free probability so talk. <laughs> okay, so. I would like to talk about the uh, so matrix liberation process. It comes, uh, so the notion comes from free probability, especially uh, Boykoresk's liberation process in free probability. And I should so first explain several so standard, standard notation, notions. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so I should, I, I denote by so large M sub N so up SA, uh, the N by N zero hydrogen matrices, which are naturally isomorphic to the N, N large N square uh, dimensional Euclidean space. And that uh, you should choose a, uh, well, so independent large N square dimensional uh, standard Brownian motions. Okay, so N chuples of independent so standard Brownian motions. On, so taking Whose value, uh, taking values in so large n square Euclidean spaces. Then so I regard uh, each so this so standard Brownian motion divided by square root of large n as an n by n matrix valued stochastic process, which I denote by so large h sub n uh, of, over i at time t, so by using the natural so identification between so large n square dimensional Euclidean space with uh, well, so n by n, the n by n zero hydrogen matrices. Then the system of stochastic differential equation, uh, so derived, so coming from so this so matrix valued stochastic process defines the n independent Brownian motions on the unitary group of rank N. So which, uh, so usually, so which usually called as, uh, well, so unitary Brownian motions on the full unitary group of rank large N. So here is a so known fact. So, so these, so, an independent unitary Brownian motion converges to independent hard distributed unitary random matrices in distribution as time t, time t goes to infinity. So this is one of the source to, const to understand, uh, to construct a liberation process, matrix liberation process. Okay, so here is a given data. So given data are, so top triples of, triple of uh, so, zero hydrogen matrices of rank large n, and uh, we I, I consider just a tuples of matrix valued stochastic process. So, which comes from a joint action of unitary Brownian motion acting on given so matrices, and I call so this so stochastic process uh, this family of stochastic process processes the matrix liberation process starting at the given matrices. Well, so here are our facts. And uh, the first fact is that, uh, well, so the spectral information of yeah, each, so this guy, is independent of time t because the uh, adjoint action doesn't give any effect to matrices. And the uh, limits of, okay, so these, so, stochastic process in the weak convergence sense as time t goes to infinity are given by just a, so a joint action of hard distributed unitary random matrices. And the last one, the last family, last subfamily uh, still so are the same, is the same, yeah. So here is a so stochastic differential equation for so our so matrix liberation process. So matrix, the stochastic liberation process, matrix, matrix liberation process is still given by some so stochastic differential equation coming from so matrix uh, 
so Brownian motion, self agent Brownian motion. So this is one of the key to, to so analyze my question so on matrix liberation process. So here are notations. Well, so H, N, H sub n, I at T, so n independent, large n times large n matrix Brownian motions, and uh, U sub large n over I at time P, n independent Brownian motions, so unitary Brownian motions on rank at large n. And uh, U sub n over I, so n independent hard distributed unitary random matrices, which are the limit of this so unitary Brownian motion at time to time p goes to infinity. And this guy is n by n, large n by n matrix liberation process starting at the given matrices. And uh, these guys are so just a limit at time infinity. So I should so clarify so what are my motivations to consider so matrix liberation process. My first motivation is uh, to, want, uh, to unify two approaches to possible mutual information in free probability. Mutual information measures uh, the degree or lack of the degree of independence for given random matrices, uh, random variables, and uh, it's uh, quite important. So quantity in so usual so information theory. And uh, in free probability, the most important no notion is just a free independence. So we want to, so the primary, motiva primary aim to in free probability is to understand the free independence. So in any degree of so deepness or something. And uh, so mutual information in free probability is quite important. And so, so important, and uh, it should play an uh, important role in free probability. But uh, well, so there are so two approaches to mutual information in free probability. One is uh, one is due to so Boy so in 1999. So he used the uh, well, so the large n limit of unit unitary Brownian motion and. Uh, so his definition doesn't involve random matrix. And uh, then, so 2009, so he and Miyamoto and I so introduced other, another approach to mutual information. But uh, unfortunately, at the present moment, we don't know. So those approaches, are the, uh, those approaches give the same quantity. But, uh, those quantities share the same properties. But we don't know so whether or not they, are, they, agree, or, they agree or not. So uh, the problem is that one should try to unify or to distinguish those quantities. And this is the first motivation. And the second motivation is that uh, Yes, so I want to so investigate large n limits of agile interactions of unitary Brownian motions or matrices. So these are my motivations. So uh, the problem comes from so free probability. So I should so recall or I should recall some heart in so free probability. So well, so usually so in usual probability theory, one should one start with uh, so probability space. Yeah, probability space. But uh, it's enough to consider just uh, so L infinity space together with a very specific linear to functional defined on this space. So given by just probability measure. And uh, OK, so one can so understand the independence, the notion of independence by using only so this guy and this guy. Well, so in this talk, so we consider random matrices, and the random matrices are non-commutative objects. So 
this so usual probability framework is not enough to understand random matrices, especially the large n limit. And therefore, we need to, well, so generalize uh, so framework to more general uh, so situation, so just as a non-commutative situation. And uh, well, so the L infinity algebra should be replaced with a uh, Honneman algebra. Honneman algebra is an uh, algebra uh, so consisting of bounded operators. And the bounded operators correspond to just as so a L infinity function or something like that. Then, and, uh, then we need uh, so just a probability measure, but the probability measure can be replaced with uh, so specific linear functional. So we give a specific linear functional on von Neumann algebra M. And uh, I, sh I prefer to put trachality to this given uh, linear functional because, uh, well, so we are dealing with random matrices and uh, we usually take a trace. <laughs> So tracial property is so sufficient to understand random matrices, or more precisely, the large n limit of random matrices. So here is a free independence. The free independence is a large n limit of usual independence. Mm, uh, so through the random matrix approximation, and uh, the formulation is the following. So if you have a, well, so non-commutative random variables x and y, so which should live in so given von Neumann algebra m, that corresponds to so just L infinity algebra in usual series. And uh, x and y are freely independent if so all the possible traces of words in x and y uh, should be zero whenever so the word is an alternating word of two kinds of elements, f of x minus trace of f of x, and z of y minus trace of z of y. And I should so remark that uh, well, so this guy has trace value zero, and also this guy has trace value zero. And uh, so what, what is f? So f is just a non-commutative, uh, not non, yeah, f is non-commutative poly polynomial if x is not self-agent. So f is a polynomial in x and x star. And uh, if you consider so just as a non-self-agent x, then x and x star do not commute. So you need to consider so non-commutative yeah, non polynomial so in x and x star. So here is a uh, so Schpecht's criterion. So maybe so many, many of you know so Specht, the name of Specht, so mathematician Specht. So he is a very famous in representation theory. And uh, if you look at uh, so Wikipedia page of Specht, so there are so two famous results due to him. So one is uh, just a Specht module. It's a quite Im important, quite uh, so famous so result. And the other one is so unitary criterion for given so matrices. So Speight proves the following. Well, so if you have so two n tuples of so large n times large n matrices, so not necessarily cells are joint, then the following are equivalent. The first condition is that uh, where the N, the n triple A and the n triple B are unitarily equivalent by a fixed unitary U. And the second condition is that all the moments in A and in B must agree. And uh, this is not exactly the moment, but if you divide by large n, so this quantity is nothing but a moment. So the conclusion is that uh, where the non-commutative moments with given matrices form a complete invariant for unitary equivalence. And the free probability deal with a large n limit of those invariants, which are formulated in terms of probability theory as, as uh, so non-commutative distributions and when x and y are random. So, so free probability, so analyze, and the large n limit of 
well, ra random unitarily, unitarily invariant for given so random matrices. And the uh, limit, the large n limit of so independence, usual independence is nothing but a free independence. So you relax the self-adjoint condition here? You know. So, so yeah, A can be so non-self-agent and uh, A can be non-self-agent. Non-self-agent, yeah. exactly. But, uh, but I put, but I put, what? Well, yeah, I put this guy and yeah. this guy. So just a non-commutative, so was and uh, non-commutative polynomial and so on. So I need to, so we need to so clarify what means so distributions in the free probability setting. Because, and uh, if you have, so in usual probability setting, if you have a so n-dimensional random variable, then you can understand the distribution of this guy as a probability measure on n-dimensional Euclidean space. And uh, this is nothing but a linear functional defined on this sister algebra. So that which is, uh, which is uh, continuous functions over the n-dimensional Euclidean space vanishing at infinity and that defined on that space uh, by so just the expectation value of f of x. So the non-commutative distribution and uh, so usual even, even, even usual distribution should be understood as a linear functional. But uh, in the non-commutative setting, there is one problem. Okay, so we have uh, so n tuples of random variables in okay, so non-commutative so probability space. We should consider just a linear functional. F goes to trace of F of x1 dot dot xn. But the question is, so what are F? Of course, uh, the most easy answer is that uh, one should consider non-commutative polynomials. But uh, well, so probability theory is analysis. In, in, in some branch of analysis, we need to consider topology and uh, so analysis. So non-commutative polynomials are algebraic objects. And non-commutative polynomials are not enough to consider analytical question. So we need to formulate an analytical object which captures all the non-commutative polynomials in so x1 and uh, the, the, the xn. So to do so, so one should take a universal sister algebra. Because uh, universal means that uh, all the non-commutative polynomials, uh, so all the non-commutative polynomials live in sister in that sister algebra faithful. Yeah. Well so with these notations so I should so formulate large n limits of so our so matrix liberation process. Okay so let m well so let large m and tau so be a Tracial double stack probability space. So that is, M is a von Neumann algebra and the tau is a faithful normal tracial state. And the faithfulness and the normality are so technical assumptions. And so uh, I, don't take, I don't take care about that in this talk. And the UIT, unitary mat operator valued processes in large M called free unitary Brownian motion, which are large N limits of unitary Brownian motions. And I assume that uh, there exists uh, there exist, uh, so family of so operators living in large M, such that uh, well, the, that, uh, that are, those are so large N limit of given matrices in distribution sense. And, uh, and also, I assume that uh, X, I, J are freely independent of U, I, T. And define, so, so the processes in this way. So this is nothing but a large N limit of matrix liberation processes. 
matrix liberation process. And uh, so there are, so there is a uh, so known result about large, uh, large L limit of so matrix liberation process due to so Philip Bia. And so Philip Bia discussed the uh, so unitary Brownian motion and uh, its large N limit. And uh, well, so the finite dimensional distribution, so finite dimensional distribution is in the sense of so usual so stochastic analysis of the, so this matrix valid liberation, matrix liberation process converges to that, the corresponding one of the, so Boikulesk's so liberation process. And so, yeah. So in this way, and uh, the same proof so due to Bian with a more so recent result on unitary Brownian motion shows that the above convergence so can be strengthened to almost sure almost sure sense, so without taking so expectation. So the question is that so is there an appropriate large deviation principle for the above convergence? So that was uh, so specific so motivation to so the present talk. So I should so recall our object. So this is matrix liberation process, and this is uh, time. Uh, so this is the limit of matrix liberation process at time infinity, and uh, we take a uh, so large n limit. So we get uh, so Boikulesk so liberation process. So in free probability setting, and uh, this guy converges to so this guy so in distribution sense, and also this guy converges to this guy. So freely independent copies of uh, the given so mat operators in distribution sense, and. Uh, so today I would like to so consider just this part in view of so large deviation principle, and uh, but uh, my main, at the present moment, my main problem is to take the limit this way. But uh, it's so difficult to consider just uh, so this, this two line of two <coughs> lines of limits. Well, so. So large deviation principle needs uh, so some topology on so state space. So I need to so formulate state space. So assume that a large R uh, is a is a so supremum of all uh, of so operator norms of the given given so matrices over so over so matrix size at large n. And they consider just a so universal sister algebra, uh, give, uh, so generated by uh, so this in, in indeterminate, with subject to this matrix, uh, this so norm uh, assumption. Then the so small c and t s be the threshold states on c. So this universal sister algebra c such that. So this map are all continuous. Well, otherwise, all the resulting operators be as a so GNS representation associated with, uh, with given so linear function of so threshold state phi are strongly continuous on Hilbert space, on GNS Hilbert space. And there is a so natural topology so on this so terrestrial state space. So this is a full terrestrial state space because I assume that uh, well, so our terrestrial state satisfies this continu continuity assumption. But uh, on that smaller space of our terrestrial states, we can define so very natural topology. Uh, so by defining uh, by inputting so this so metric and uh, well so phi sub large n is a distribution of matrix liberation process and the phi infinity is a 
distribution of Boykolesk's liberation process. And uh, well, so this state space, so this is state space, and this state space guarantees the common framework to understand so Boykolesk's liberation process and uh, our matrix liberation process. And uh, I should so remark that uh, so, okay, so phi sub large n are random, but uh, phi infinity is deterministic. And uh, so that topology corresponds to the yeah corresponds to the given process converges to the so resulting infinite dimensional process as continuous process. Well, so prospective, so, uh, so here is a prospective LDP, so large deviation principle. So for any, so, yeah, so we already so formulated the topology on our state space. Yeah, our state space. So we can consider just an open set and a closed set. And for, op for any open set, so this inequality holds. And uh, for any closed set lambda, so this inequality holds, where so i is a lower semi-continuous function whose level set are all compact, which are called the, which are called a good red function. And also, it's preferable that, uh, well, so i has a, so this, so red function has a, so unique minimizer at the limit, the limit distribution was, as a was a, so distribution for so boy Kresk, the mutual uh, liberation process. So the next step, uh, so the first step to, towards a large deviation principle, we need to construct so rail function. But the construction is a little bit complicated. Okay, so for any given so distribution, so, so living in so our state space, so continuous terrestrial state space, then construct a new phi s, phi up s in our continuous terrestrial state space, depending on time s as follows. Well, the step one. Okay, so construct a terrestrial double star probability space, m phi and tau phi, which includes a family of aij phi and uh, of processes whose joint distribution is given by, so given phi. So by the correspondence, so between so Cij t and uh, Aij phi t, and the freely independent family so of unitary Brownian motions, such that those families are freely independent. So we can construct such a large, so, uh, so double star probability space by using a free product in for Neumann algebra. Then the steps, second step is so consider a new family of processes. The new family is as follows. So f up to time s, the given so process. And after time s, so just a given process. So we liberate given process. The step three, so the correspondence, so CI, sending Cijt to Bij phi s, so this new process gives a new so continuous terrestrial state, and uh, this so this is nothing but a distribution of this new processes. And uh, then so we need to introduce uh, so some so derivation, non-commutative derivation, uh, defined on some dense subalgebra of our so sister algebra C. And uh, so A, so this A is a st st subalgebra, algebraically generated by so Cijt, so these symbols. And uh, A tilde be the universal star algebra generated by A and uh, new stuffs, so which are so unitary indeterminates, Vit. And uh, consider the derivation delta sub S so with index k, so from so this so dense algebra a to so this 
so tensor product of this larger algebra determined by so Cij so the map send, sends Cijt to so this guy. And uh, in usual so free probability setting, so the, this guy doesn't appear. So just as so Xi, XKJ tensor identity minus identity tensor so Xij. But uh, so I found so this so formula by looking at uh, so Clark Ocon formula so, so for our so liberation, matrix liberation process. And uh, with so the tensor flip mapping, and we can define a linear map. Yeah, linear map so D sub S with index K from A to A tilde. So A tilde is a really so bigger space of given A. Then so we can consider just uh, so uh, so conditional expectation in the operator algebra sense from so von Neumann algebra M phi to generated by those guys up to time s. Then our rate function i phi of phi is defined to be so just a limit this sup suprema. And here is a proposition. So I is a good rate function and uh, it has a unique minimizer. And so unique minimizer is exactly the distribution of Boyklesk's liberation process. So here is the main result. So it's a very so small step towards my problem. So, so the, okay, so the large deviation upper bound holds with a good rate function. Uh, so as introduced so on the previous slide. So that is for any closed set lambda, we have a, so this limit sup is less than minus infinity over all phi in so the given closed set lambda of I of phi. And uh, moreover, so I of phi equals zero if and only if phi is the distribution of so Boyklesk's liberation process. So here is a corollary. So corollary says that uh, where the distribution of matrix liberation process converges to uh, so liberation process, Boyklesk's liberation process almost surely as continuous processes, not to finite dimensional in the sense of, not in the sense of so finite dimensional distribution. So here is a so standard proof of corollary. So to prove this corollary, so the so usual so trick is to use the uh, so borel cantor lemma. And uh, it's enough, uh, so okay, so large deviation upper bound with a unique minimizer property is enough so to work so this so standard proof. Okay, so let me so briefly explain some ingredients in the proof of the theorem. Well, the, I use the same strategy as in Bian and Captain and Guillaume, the so papers on so matrix, uh, cell agent matrix Brownian motions. Well, so choose uh, so any so cell agent non-commutative polynomial living in this so dense algebra A. And consider the martingale by using the filtration of sigma algebra for the given so matrix Brownian motion. Okay, so apply the Clark or Cohn formula to this so, well, so, mat, uh, so martingale, but uh, here so we need some so technique on so SD in, in relation with Marivan calculus. But anything anyway, we can do, we can so apply so crack or cone formula to this so martingale and then find the integrand for an integral representation of quadratic variation in terms of the polynomial. So in that way, so I can find I found 
the formula of so this so linear op, linear mapping or so just a derivation. And here is a lemma. So exponential mapping there coming from so this so the mapping there. So as I introduced on the previous slide. So this becomes a so so this is usually called as exponential mapping and indeed this guy so becomes a mapping gap. So hence so this formula falls. And uh, well so standard so strategy in so large deviation theory says that uh, well so this red part gives a formula of so red function. So the formula of red function comes from so this red part. So I need to compute the large n limit of this part because this is just a so fixed, uh, this is the quantity at a fixed rank large n. So, so we need to uh, so discuss so this, so the large n limit of this part, especially so this guy. But uh, we, so this formula so involves just an integral. So we need to give a uh, so uniform limit on compact interval in time. But uh, when well, I first so apply to compute large n limit to this guy, uh, okay, so I first apply so usual so, uh, so GUE, so large n limit results to so this guy, yeah, yeah, this guy to compute the formula of large n limit of this guy. Then, so I apply so Chile Levy's method for unitary Brownian motions, uh, so to estimate or so to prove so the convergence is really so uniform in finite time interval. So anyway, so these guys are converted to so some expected so large n limit in finite time interval, any finite type in time intervals. So those are, those are so this part is a, this part is uh, so just a main part of the proof of this theorem. Yeah. Yeah, more five minutes, yes, I know. <laughs> well, so now is a, uh, uh, so, okay, so let me so ma briefly mention the works in progress. Well, so I want to take a, so contraction principle at time t of our large, our, so, our large deviation upper bound. Okay, so we can, find, we can take a contraction principle at any time t. But uh, towards a unification, question, unification problem between so Boykoresk's approach and uh, our approach to free mutual information, we need to take a contraction principle at time infinity. <laughs> it's a really difficult part and uh, so the problem is that uh, so does the uh, above large deviation upper bound still holds time infinity? Well, so there is one way to prove such kind of result, and uh, so usually so standard so in standard large deviation theory, one should one try to prove so exponential convergence or something something like that uh, to given so random variables, but it's so difficult to prove such kind of result for matrix liberation process. And therefore, I try to another route. So another route is to analyze the lower, lower bound of heat kernel on the so unitary group. And uh, there is one so existing result on the so lower bound of heat kernel on compact manifold, which is due to so one. So in the late so 90s. And uh, I applied his result, I got, got some so lower bound. 
But that lower bound is not enough to get uh, our desired so large deviation, uh, so upper large deviation upper bound. And, the, and uh, so, uh, so the, the most, uh, well, so I think that uh, the most important so question to other, uh, of course, as a, as a very, very sub step to other, uh, okay, so unification between Boykoretsko's approach and our approach. And uh, one major step is to analyze the uh, heat kernel lower bound on unitary groups. And the upper bound, we can, we, we know upper bound of, so heat kernel in this context. Indeed, so Chiri Levy and uh, so Maida uh, to discuss uh, so heat kernel uh, at a neutral element. And uh, they obtained some limiting result uh, which comes from so Guillaume and uh, so Maida's so result on so character expansions on, so on some so classical groups and, and together with so large deviation so consideration. And anyway, so they proved some result on heat kernels so by using so previous result. And that result gives us so expected so upper bound. So logarithmic asymptotic limit of the heat kernel, heat kernel upper bound. So that, that, that value should be so zero. But uh, I could at the present moment on, uh, only prove the lower bound uh, is just a finite and uh, maybe so minus two pi times so, I don't remember, but it involves some the number of the uh, so small n. So, so the remaining so most important question is so just heat kernel so lower bound on the unitary group. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.